Good morning, kids. Today we're checking out a brand new video from the Goji Center well, about could Godzilla defeat the Titan Hunter? Now, here's also the thing. I have absolutely no idea what this Titan Hunter mech actually is. So this is also the explained video for it. Let's hop in and see what we can learn from this mechanical contraption. What you're looking at right now is not something out of Pacific Rim. This I, I was actually just about to say, it looks like a beta design for the Yeagles. <laughs> this monstrosity right here came straight off the Monsterverse. A mechanical weapon built for one thing, killing titans. That's right, yeah. today on Goji Center, we're going to give a full breakdown on this monster-killing machine, its backstory, Whoa, and what? determine whether or not this thing could stand up against Godzilla. To start off, let's provide a little bit of context. This titanic mech was featured in the most recent MonsterVerse graphic novel, Godzilla Kong The Hunted. Oh. Built by a construction company, RM Construction, whose CEO, Raymond Martin, had an obsession over hunting big game. More specifically, Megafauna. Oh, and yeah, now, yeah. Titans. To be fair, it was the female Muto, who was mistakenly portrayed as the Queen Muto, who killed his family during G-Day back in 2014. His oh, desire damn. for revenge and hatred towards the Get Titans up. led him to become the sadistic, cold-blooded Titan Hunter he turned into ten years later. We'll get to Whoa. the giant robot soon. In the book, we are introduced... Okay, now, hold on. Here also comes the question, how the hell did he get all the stuff to build that? I mean, that thing is standing on the exact same level as Godzilla. And isn't he standing at, like, oh, 150 meters tall? Like, that's gigantic in feet. ...to a private island housing a building that acts as a sort oh, of my... trophy room where he there keeps preserved corpses of megafauna he has hunted in Skull Island. We'd like to think this man had agreements with top monarch personnel that gave him under-the-table access to these locations that were off-limits to the public. This way, this guy was able to hunt down and kill creatures like magma turtles, death jackals, mother longlegs, scur buffaloes, okay. etc. But now, as humanity started to find ways to safely travel down into the Hollow Earth, this guy and his company also kept up, providing Monarch with a good contractor to build an infrastructure in the Hollow Earth and almost <laughs> negotiating himself away into having his own personal, undisclosed Hollow Earth entry point. And down here, setting up traps to hunt down and capture big game. As seen here, this game. new creature we are introduced to is known as the Spine Prowler. A feline-like creature that is referred to as a titan, but not up to the caliber of some of the bigger ones like Godzilla and Rodan. These spine prowlers are probably- Honestly, it kind of seems like we need to have a different classification. Like, you have titan, which could be any creature above a certain size, but then for the big titans, I guess, well, technically they have titanus. So yeah, you could have titans, and then you can have the titanus. Okay, there you go. No, I just figured out for you. Take it. Probably at the oh, level oh, of the murder fish and the frost bark from Monarch Legacy of Monsters. They're big, but not full on Titan sized. Ooh. Hi. Hold on, everyone. We'll be right back. And we're back. This spine prowler in particular was caught by stepping in a barrage of shock harpoons, putting this titan in a coma. Knocked out long enough to be transported to the surface to serve a very dark purpose. <laughs> yeah, just like the poor skull crawler from Godzilla vs. Kong known as Number 10, this spine prowler was supposed to act as an opponent for this mech in its first maiden test. That's right, apart from coming up with ingenious ways of hunting down kaiju in Skull Island and Hollow Earth, Raymond Martin spent half a billion dollars developing what he called the Titan Hunter. Oh, this God, really man. expensive mech was pretty much a colossal mech suit, housing Raymond himself inside a chamber where his limbs would attach to a suit-like apparatus that amplified his movements. Yes, oh, no, this is as tough. close as the Monsterverse has gotten to Pacific Rim. Unlike the Jaegers, however, the the Titan Hunter only has to be operated by one pilot. Here on our analysis mm -hmm. platform, we have the opportunity to reconstruct this mech for your viewing. Size-wise, this mech is built like a Titan. 
Thousands of tons of metal went into building this mech, reaching oh, sizes wait. that surpassed yeah. the height of many Titans, Mutos, and yes, even Kong himself. We'll see how this plays out in a little bit. Built to be lean and surprisingly agile, this mech would prove to be a formidable opponent even for many types of Titans, as we are about to see. This mech's arms are long enough to supply it with enough reach to capture incoming titans at range and long legs to supply a good range for kicks as well. This thing pretty much <laughs> resembles what a human would look like fighting a kaiju at similar size. What How does this hunter perform has. against kaijus? Yeah. Let's find out. The graphic novel also introduces us to a section of this private island that is walled, serving as a sort of arena where kaijus would be placed into to test out the viability of combat of the Titan Hunter. In this sequence, we find that the Titan Hunter oh. severely outclassed the Spine Prowler, kicking it around and hitting him like a rag doll. Eventually, after so many hits, this Prowler succumbed to really heavy injuries, killing it in a few moments. Oh. This Titan Hunter was combat ready, and now <laughs> Raymond was confident to bring the Titan Hunter down to face a real test. But there's something really important to note here that we purposely left out until now. After the Titan Hunter dispatched the Spine Prowler, Raymond made mention of this mech's energy outputs. A small dip in energy output was detected upon hitting the Prowler for the first time. This was an issue because That's since the end right. game was to kill a big Titan, energy shutdowns would spell doom for this mech and the pilot. The energy required to keep this mech functional was an outstanding amount. So much, in Wait. fact, that the energy core of this mech was powerful enough to attract other Titans, and more specifically, someone like Godzilla. Awkward. That's right, the creators of this mech knew this, and that is why they would activate decoy energy reactors around the planet, so while they tested oh. this mech, Godzilla would be distracted by another level. energy output somewhere else, preventing Godzilla from crashing into this secret secret facility. This would later well. prove to send both Godzilla and another powerful titan known as Scylla in an inevitable collision course that would end up wrecking many places around Ooh, the world. There it goes. Stay tuned for our episode discussing this rivalry because it gets better. Back to the Titan Hunter. After a successful test, the Titan Hunter was lowered down to the Hollow Earth where it would experience its first hunting expedition. Monarch already had bases down here, and this so place was massive. already under surveillance. However, RM Construction had already spread enough money around to prevent Monarch from meddling with Raymond's hunting expedition. To illustrate just how powerful this mech was, let's talk about how it was able to dispatch a warbat with a chokehold to the throat in just a few seconds. Note Jeez. that although this Titan mech doesn't really possess any sharp handheld melee weaponry, this mech does have a very, very strong grip. Powered by hydraulic <laughs> mechanics, this hand grip is strong enough to grab titans, and a thinner titan like a warbat would easily get its neck snapped. Oh, hold on, we'll be right back. And we're back. This mech continued walking around killing other sorts of megafauna, such as this seemingly oversized Skur Buffalo. Oh, I gotta ask, how would you bag any of these titans? They're titans! They're massive! Okay, no, they probably would bag it the same way they brought down the Huntel. Okay. Before okay, we fine, may just be fine. seeing the worst scaled image in this entire franchise, it was evident that Raymond was having a field day with the life forms found down here, killing as he went and having, should we say, well-paid personnel transport the kills to the surface for his trophy room. Oh. Things got interesting <laughs> when he ran into the cubs of a spine prowler. As the Titan Hunter leaped in front of the cubs, a particularly large adult female spine prowler came to the rescue. Here is where we get introduced to another melee weapon that this mech had. But meanwhile, all the commotion was attracting the attention of Kong. Oh, and as these guys oh, were bagging up all the corpses, Kong quickly gets a good sense of what these guys are up to and quickly deals with them. Meanwhile, the mother spine prowler, while trying to defend her offspring, gets impaled by one of the two horns of this Ooh. titan hunter. Interestingly, these aren't really made of metal. These probably belong to a really large crustacean-like kaiju killed by Raymond and Co. Mounting these sharp pincers on the head of this mech for this precise reason. 
finally, Kong appears in front of the Titan mech. It was for this exact moment that this mech was created to stand up against a real Titan like Kong. But could this mech actually stand up to a Titan just like Mega Godzilla did earlier? I'm a bet actually, I it did for a while. Immediately after Kong's initial charge, this mech hunter's greater reach allowed it to chokehold Kong, keeping him at bay. At this point, Kong was trapped by this mech's superior hydraulic grip strength, getting thrown very far away. But Kong wasn't beat yet. Kong gets up and kicks down the mech on the floor, and with both fists smashes down on the chest of this mech. Surprisingly, this mech was still operational after such an impact and functional enough to punch Kong in the face once again. Damn. But it takes more than a punch to bring down the king of Hollow Earth, who in return slams the mech close to a nearby precipice. A Defeated and at the mercy of Kong's hold, Raymond still found some time to trash talk before Kong released the hold, making him and the Titan Hunter fall and be destroyed. Damn. Defenseless and without an operational mech, Raymond fell prey to the small cubs he intended to kill earlier. So the real question, was this Titan Hunter enough to square up against some of the higher tier Titans like Godzilla? God, the simple no. answer, absolutely not. Apart from not having sufficient firepower and enough weight to withstand a head-on charge from an angry lizard, the creators of this <laughs> mech and Raymond himself knew that they weren't ready for that kind of fight, which is why they consistently set off energy beacons around the world to distract Godzilla in the first place. The Titan Hunter certainly did some damage to the Hollow Earth. I mean, while, yes, it had a strong enough fist to really do its damage, fist alone was not gonna cut it. Godzilla has an atomic breath that can literally bond through anything, and Kong has the spine axe. So, unless you... Uh, no, yeah, spinal dorsal... Uh, the fin axe, there you go. He has the fin axe. So, unless you have some kind of weapon to match them, you got nothing. <laughs> Titan population, and have we seen the end of humanity's attempt of regaining the top rank of the planet's food chain? Probably not. Most likely not. Well, everyone, that's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Links to the original will be in the description below. And I'll see all you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.